um, I am delighted that she's that she's agreed to join us. She joined uh, Axpo in December. Uh, she has over 20 years of experience from the energy business. She is um, she knows plenty about LNG. She knows uh, lots about renewable energy, which is also a huge passion of hers. And she has spent many years in in Singapore. And um, I am very pleased to uh, invite uh, Sophie de Colonnais to the show. Sophie, welcome. Welcome. So uh, very good nice. morning for you and uh, good afternoon for those who are with me in Asia. Thank you very much. Um, it's a uh, um, great to see you here for starters. Uh, I, um, I appreciate the, I appreciate the time taken. I know you've got a hell of a lot on, uh, these days having, having just landed in the new job. So, um, thank you for, uh, for, for lending us a bit of, of your time and perspective on, on, uh, on some, um, matters relating to the business of Expo, but also your own take on cultures, performance, people everything that we uh, that, that both of us are, are are very passionate about so uh, can i just confirm from my head of studio that we are indeed we are indeed live okay oh, we're yeah, we fine thank you um i i'd like to start let me make it easy for you sophie um you're appointed the md of the latest hub of Axpo in Singapore. Why did you want that job in the first place? Yeah, that's that's a good question. Well, you know, when I when I um, I met Axpo and I realized I could have the opportunity to build my own company in, in Singapore and be backed by a very solid uh, shareholder and partner, uh, then I thought it was a great challenge. Um, because if, if you look at Axpo uh, from a shareholder, you know, structure and, and company, we are a state-owned uh, Swiss company, so very solid balance sheet. Uh, we are a leader in uh, marketing renewable energy in Europe, uh, the largest power generation company in Switzerland. We have a very strong gas and power activity, including LNG, uh, over 35 countries again, mostly in Europe and also in, uh, in the US and now in Asia. And I thought, you know, the company was really representative, I think, on everything which is linked to the energy transition. So really at the top of, of this uh, tremendous transformation, uh, my own interest as well. And then when I looked at the culture and the people, I found them very entrepreneurial, very origination focused, uh, very localized. And that's why we have so many subsidiaries. I really like the team. Uh, the management, and I thought it was, the, you know, the good time for me to to make a move because I, I worked in most of uh, commodity export trade, you know, in power, in emission, uh, in renewable, and for the last ten years in LNG. So I, um, I have, I thought it was a great idea to develop a mini expo in Asia and and to mix, you know, expo my own passion and to and Asia basically. So I try to mix everything and uh, and get the best of everyone. Understood. Thank you very much for putting some words on that. So, so entrepreneurship, challenge, autonomy, uh, independence, but also backed by uh, a, a, a large group. Um, I get the um, I get the appeal. Um, the The opportunity to um, to create something from uh, you know a, a standing start or 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 a blank canvas. Um, I guess, I guess, uh, um, I guess brings the question: What what do you expect to create? Oh, uh, I mean, we are very clear. So, the, the the first step is really to develop our LNG business. I mean, we we are Expo is very strong in in the Atlantic. We have short position, uh, especially in northern uh, southern Europe. Sorry, um, and therefore we trade. Uh, cargoes uh, mostly around the Atlantic, and sometimes we optimize with Asia. So the, the the initial idea and the strategy is really to expand that and to become a global player, uh, leverage what we have, you know, in the Atlantic and expand further in, in the Pacific. So that's my priority for now. I want to build a scalable business to start on LNG, 
um, and in the meantime, learning about you know other commodity in the region. I mean, we we have you know some idea to develop um, existing commodity we trade on a global basis. It could be you know, for example, LPG. I mean, nothing is is set for the moment, and and also uh, to look into gas and power market uh, in more um, you know downstream and liquid market uh, because we we are traders. So in the end, really the. The goal is to to have within a few years um, the business model of Axpo deployed in Asia, um, and, and for that we we need to recruit you know local talent. Um, again, I, I said that before, but um, you have a lot of subsidiaries among Axpo, and we usually hire local talent because they are the one who know best the market conditions, the player. Uh, market trends and the need, and and that's very important to be able to develop relationship with uh, counterparts and make sure that you you propose a um, competitive solution for them. And I think it's quite relevant now in Asia because you know with liberalisation of energy market and the increased volatility, a lot of players are, are a bit lost, and we are a trading house, you know, of a utility company. We understand what is risk management. Uh, what is competition downstream, and how it is important to to have a, you know a safe value chain, um, and and again uh, to be agile in uh, in the market. So okay. we hope to help you know to optimize portfolio of third party, and at the same time develop our own business. Okay. Um... As it's always a bit of fun with uh, with 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 live um, live TV like this, we're, we're trying to deal with things as they arise. Um, so let me first get an answer to this guy because we have a gentleman from Trafigura who's uh, who's uh, who's struggling to get in. Can you just write to him that um, that if he can um, he, he can find the event under um, our company page and try and get in that way? We're just trying to help. Um, a traffic trader to come in and i also know for a fact that that this gentleman has a uh, has a question for us uh, which i will mm -hmm. come back to later and a reminder to everybody else for that matter that we um we uh, we we are uh, we are very happy to take questions um live um during the um during the event and um and and if we find that the question is relevant uh, and here i mean it has to has to bear some sort of relevance to what we're talking about here which is um um really anchored around um culture people performance uh, and and rather not not getting into the the weeds of uh, of, of technical aspects of lng and expo um that's at least uh, that's at least my choice of the, uh, of, the of the of the of the session to um, to not get too deep into that. So, but anyway, in short, uh, if we have questions, please uh, um, please get them through to us uh, across um, across LinkedIn or um, WhatsApp them uh, across, and we will deal with them. Um, so, let's. Let's then look at the at the uh, at the situation that we're at. You are you. Expo appointed you uh, through obviously the um, exceptional competent services of a of a, um, of a of a headhunter appointed a um, a brilliant team. Um, you're the leader, so now this piece here is is really for the aspiring entrepreneurs out there. You got the keys. We will now want to hear about what what happens next what is in in broad strokes what do the first say 180 days look like for a startup on the sophie well i mean first of all you you need to build the platform you know it's it's uh uh you know when, when i arrived um we were a team of two and um you know at, at the beginning you need to really have like a roll out your sleeve attitude and be very multitask because it, it's very easy in a way to set up a, a business in singapore they really facilitate uh, all the admin aspect but equally you need to uh, deal you know with the tax authority you need to find uh, an office uh, you need to set up the it you know in, in trading organization it is key um so so you have to you know 
talk to the market in the morning and then you know the next day choose the color of your chair so it, it's you have to be very multitask and very humble in in the way you do things and and most importantly you need to to select the right team because you know i i don't think i you know i'm better than anyone else in the world and i i need a good team to work with me to achieve you know our goal you know, that i described before so i uh, i spend a lot of time uh, trying to think you know what which type of talent uh, i need mindset that uh, then you people you are supported by very nice head and turn and 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 also you you try to it's it's like a puzzle you know to to build a team you you find someone which potentially will be great but uh, then you need to balance this with another person which can complement some some skills uh, that the other person doesn't have and also the personality etc so so the, the team took a long time to 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 set up because it, it's actually key that you you have the right one to start the business so and then you start to talk to the market etc which is more you know traditional in a way so it's um yeah it, it requires a lot of of courage and to be dynamic but myself i'm, I'm very happy to do it so uh, all good very good okay um i think i think maybe 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 now is a is a is good timing to to bring in a, a question from one of our from one of our viewers uh, and I do hope uh, Zhao Jales uh, from Shanghai in China uh, that you've been able to um, to join us and you've been able to log in. Um, if not, then at least we can enjoy your question. And your question really is around um, with the uh, increased sophistication of the trading markets uh, in LNG or the change of dynamics of what it means to be a trader in those markets. Um, is it necessary? You brought up the point of talent. Is it necessary to um, to start importing talent from neighboring commodity markets, i.e., neighboring commodity markets that have, she would say, a, a, a greater degree of um, of sophistication compared to LNG? Yeah, I think it's it's a fair question because if you look at you know the pool of talent. Uh, globally and uh, locally, I mean, especially yeah. now that you know borders are, are a bit closed everywhere. Yeah. Um, it, it's true that you you the pool is very limited. Yeah. Um, because LNG is also changing. You know, you you still have the the long term aspect of it with the business development and project finance, etc. But you know the. the the trading horizon, which is about like three years horizon, um, has changed a lot. So you have a lot of flexibility in your contract, a lot of physical optionality, but also financial optionality that you can value uh, and, and trade. And then you have, you know, different indices you need to hedge. Um, and, and these kind of skills, it's quite new, I think, for uh, because, I mean, when I, when I started traders in, in LNG, I mean, it was very, you know, fancy name, but it was more like marketer of a molecule. Um, whereas now <clears throat> you need to have, you know, some people who are uh, on the physical and trades, but also maybe the same person of other talent who can understand, you know, cross commodity trading, yeah. uh, hedging and, and paper, basically. So it, it's it's something that I, I believe will, will increase. I mean, I've seen that in... Um, you know, from a company I worked before, and, and I think that's going to be the trend. Um, because, I mean, every every commodity has its own spec, and LNG is very physical oriented, so you need to understand the contracts. And, but after that, you know, it, it's quite common, <clears throat> commonly the same as any other um, commodity, contractually at least. Honestly. Personally, you need to understand a bit what you do because it's. It's quite, um, yeah, tricky. Yeah, understood. Okay, Zhao, uh, thank you very much for your question. Uh, we had another question come in, which is from Greg Franco, but it's just, I'm sorry, Greg, it's too off piece from the discussion. So I thank you for the question, um, but uh, I think it's uh, it will it will take us um, it will take us too far into. Uh, 
into the into the off-piste skiing on this one, I think. Uh, so let's let's talk back about cultures. Um, Expo hub cultures uh, across the business in Europe and in US are uh, well, pretty unique and always shaped quite heavily or influenced quite heavily by the MD of the hub. That's the that's part of the charm. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what, if you could say, what three words would characterize Expo Singapore culturally under you? Could you pick three words for us? Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I think the... If I had to choose three words, I, I would maybe I would choose four, but I I would choose um, to be passionate and entrepreneurial, uh, to be you know accountable, uh, and to be um, you know market customer driven. I think that's that's the most important, and I, I can develop a bit. I think entrepreneur, especially when you again you are in a startup. Um, you need to create this environment where um, you know people can stimulate idea and push for more innovation and more business development. Uh, and when I say business development, I also talk about you know the trading space. Huh? So 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 you need to have this mindset of never stop to develop the business and very passionate about what you do. Uh, because you know we, we're not in an organization where you will be fed by a portfolio and you just have to you know, do task and uh, so you you have to have that um, as as a drive. Um, accountability and ownership for me are generally key because I'm happy to you know set the strategy, fix goal, uh, define roles, um, be very clear in uh, what we do and what we have to do, but in the end, people need to take, you know, ownership of what they do and be accountable. Um, and that's really part of uh, uh, of a success story for me. Um, and, and, you know, customer driven is, you you could think it's obvious, but it's not actually. And I, I, I would love to think that, you know, in a few months when people talk about Axpo or think about calling Axpo, they, they call us and me because they know we are uh, trustee counterparty <clears throat> who can listen, who can um, adapt to various conditions and needs, and who is also operationally, uh, you know, as a zero incident policy. So, so that's what I, I would focus on. Okay. And um, and just your personal take, Sophie, um, about. And this may may not may not differ greatly to what you've just articulated, uh, um, in which case the question is somewhat academic. But I'll be interested in understanding your personal view on cultures, do's and don'ts, based on twenty years in the market, because you must have seen lots of good things and lots of maybe not so good things, which uh, I guess have shaped your own perspective of of. Um, What's a what's a winning culture and uh, and and what's not? Do you have a view on that that you can share with us? Yeah, no, no, I, I can. I mean, winning culture is, is key because you know I I I tend to believe that you know we we spend maybe fifty percent of our time uh, working, and to me, time is the most valuable asset we have because you know you cannot buy time. Um, if you see what I mean, so um, I, I want people to to be happy and enjoy what they do, uh, and that's the best way to, to perform afterwards. I think so. Um, and you know, I've seen a lot of good thing and bad thing, which I, I may not want to develop. But I think you you need to yeah you need to have the, the right talent, but also the right mindset. I mean, trading organization can sometimes be a bit harsh. Um, but equally, if you look at, you know, long-term performance, mm. um, the right mindset is as important as talent, I think, to, to, to perform. 
uh, meaning a lot of teamwork. Uh, teamwork is very embedded in, in Axe book culture, you know, even in, in the way we, we manage books. Having one book make people much more relaxed about their own performance compared with, you know, a neighbor of performance. Um, so I, I, you know, teamwork is, is really important and, and to be transparent, you have, um, you know, a lot, a lot of internal politics, which can also prevent the business to be very efficient. Um, personally, I'm extremely direct. So, you know, counterparts so knows it, I think, and, and also my colleagues and, and team. Uh, and, and it's, it's very important because you, you need to be very clear on, uh, what is wrong, what is good, what you want, um, and, and create this environment where people can raise their view and develop ideas. And, and that's how you create this uh, virtuous cycle around creativity and innovation. Because otherwise, if people work in silo and try to you know, maintain their information, which yeah. again is quite common in trading company, um, it, it's not great for, you know, the long-term performance, um, and also to add diversity, diversity, especially in culture, um, diversity in experience. Uh, it, it's also important. You know, in, in my team, we will have, um, I mean, globally, because we cannot like take uh, LNG team here in isolation of our global team. Uh, we have more than like seven nationalities, uh, around 10 languages, uh, so different experience. And, and that's where I think you, you create a winning culture. Um, and, and last not, but not least, maybe to always am I, because, you know, winning means competition as well. You know, you, you need to be uh, happy to evolve in a competitive environment. Um, and I, and I always say to myself or to my team, I mean, what you should be scared about is, is regret and, and not failure. And, and always try to, to push yourself more and more. Okay. And um, I mean, you bring in, you bring in the point that you're, you're, uh, you're part of a global business. Uh, so, um, which dovetails nicely with, um, with, with some questions I have around onboarding challenges, um, as a, as a, as a, as a satellite business, but part of a, part of a, part of a much, much bigger story. Um, let me get your perspective on what you think that, what, what, what a company should do to promote um inclusiveness in situations such as this you're sitting um seven hours time difference away from hq and you know our new business you're finding you're finding you know your feet as to the business the, the, the culture of the business and the people associated with the business uh key stakeholders and whatnot so let me start by asking you what what do you feel that a company should be doing and I assume what a company like Expo is already now in the, in, in the middle of doing to, to promote that successful onboarding and that sense of inclusiveness uh, for uh, a satellite MD such as yourself. Yeah, and especially in, a, in an environment where uh, nobody can travel anymore. You know, I, I was um, recruited remotely. Uh, I, I started remotely. Um, I, I have a lot of new colleagues, uh, and we tend to have, you know, interesting conversation, but you know, we, we never met. Um, so this creates a, a very strange, you know, um, environment, but equally, um, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I think Axpo did a, a very great job, um, you know, from, from day one, when I, when I met them and, and the onboarding process has been very, very, uh, well organized. Um, so instead of, you know, going two weeks in, in Switzerland, then I spent two weeks here with my laptop, um, meeting all the key stakeholders, yeah. um, in the organization. On the business side, you know, on, on the support function side, but also on, 
you know, any topic, even like procurement, you know, what's the policy when I want to buy or rent an office. I mean, it was very, very deep. Um, and now I, I feel totally integrated and I'm very, um, yeah, I, I just take my phone and talk to people. I, I guess it's also easier if you are a bit of an extravert person as I am. Um, so, so again, I, I think there are challenges depending on companies and, and personality, but for me, it's been great. Uh, our HR also now have this uh, onboarding uh, online system so that, you know, people can get to know better. It's a kind of like a Facebook expo, if I can say so. So we, we, you can you can meet people from different departments, ask questions. Uh, they organize coffee together. I mean, it's it's a bit unreal when I describe that, but it's it's quite pleasant actually um, okay. to to change and and then you you need to be. You know, we are very far away, and we have a, a, the new subsidiary, so I guess it's you know the baby of the moment, but. At some point, uh, there will be over project in Maxpo, and we'll have to, you know, be be there and be sustainable and continue to develop this internal relationship. So you, yeah, you have to, you know, take your phone, organize regular meetings. Uh, with the with the core team of LNG, it's a bit different because by the nature of the business, we are integrated, and I'm sure my my colleagues from the industry knows that. You cannot run like an Asian and an Atlantic business. It has to be done together, and hence you have daily call. You work on deals together. So this is, I think, this is quite traditional. It was like the onboarding, which was a bit unique. Yeah. Um, and I will, yeah, I would advise companies to be quite careful because it's part of of a foundation. Okay. No, that's uh, um, that's that's clear. Um... No, no question from the room. No, okay, fine. Then we'll continue here. Um, what? Um, I mean, you allude to the fact that there's a at some point the honeymoon period will be over, and at the moment you're still probably enjoy the um, the. Uh, uh, it's a lot of in attention uh, internally and and externally in a, in a new venture always. Um, so there's a there's a bit of there's a bit of healthy momentum there. Which I think also helps onboarding because it's always um, um, the fact that people are interested in what you do uh, internally also, you know, promotes that um, sense of uh, inclusiveness. And um, and if you if you on top of that are naturally um, an extrovert and curious person about colleagues, uh, whether they're direct or, or 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 a bit further away, always helps. But uh, I would still like to hear from whether you have a view, uh, and again, uh, looking looking beyond just the exp the current experience with Axpo, when it comes to successful onboarding, what you what do you put on your own to do list to accelerate that process? Let me try and make that clear. You, you uh, in case that wasn't that wasn't very clear. What? Is, is there, do you have a, a, a expectations of yourself, what you should be going through? You step into a new organization, whether it's Gazprom, EDF, or Axpo, and you're saying, right, I'm starting something new. Um, onboarding is to me is a is a bit of a is a bit of a two way street. You know, the, the the company will engage their 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 processes and their employees to make you um, to make you as effective as possible, uh, uh, as quickly as possible. But are there any? Are there? Do you have any views on what you uh, what you set out to do yourself to also help the process? I mean, you, you need to. I mean, you need, as you said, to be very curious about you know what other people do in, in your company and, and therefore um, also take the initiative to contact them. You know, I have a few ideas uh, I may want to develop in Asia, which I, I believe are already, you know, business case in, in Europe. So I just take my phone and call the right person 
in the organization just to to exchange on uh you know what what they do we we have like a new office in, in ukraine so i i develop you know discussion or the project manager will work with me on singapore share a lot about what has been done in, in ukraine uh you know it's a different market but equally you know the setup is challenges are are, are quite the same so you need to be very proactive and curious yourself and and also now it's my turn to organize the same to my team because they are coming now and i i need to transfer uh, my you know short experience in expo and make sure that themselves they can be autonomous and all the right people to develop the business and not only rely on me obviously so it, it, it's gonna be you know it will take a few months, I guess, or a few weeks, so that you know the entire team is is set up and and fully integrated. But if you are a bit careful, um, it can work, I think. Um, and but but communication is key because you, I've always seen in um, in organization I worked with uh, because I was you know I've been in Asia for eleven years and we, you always have this. Uh, system where at least if you work for a European company, um, Asia remains a subsidiary, and you need to communicate a lot with uh, the headquarters and and their subsidiaries to make sure that the right communication is is done and that you know people are not surprised at some point. Oh, what is this deal? I didn't know about you know, and um, so so it it has to be um, ongoing process. Yeah, for a long time, and uh, and it's all about you know smartly representing your own interest uh, inside the group, and also you know build the necessary bridges uh, with with um, with people across the organization. I, I, I get that, um, and I guess all of those elements are extra important when you are doing it. Um, at arm's length, you're doing it virtually, you're doing it in this fashion. Um, what, um, in terms of getting to know the key people in an organization such as Axpo, where they are, you know, dotted around the place a little bit, um, and obviously you want to get to know them as quickly as possible. Um, is it just a case of of having a hundred one to ones uh, with people across the organization, uh, or or do you have any hacks you can share on how to speed up that process? I think the best is to have a project because if you just have like a sterile one to one, hi, I'm Sophie, blah blah blah. Um, okay, it's nice to have, but you know, it, it's not going to help you to to develop relationship and and to understand better the other person and trust each other. So, so the best is to have project. I mean, you cannot have project with the entire company, but um, when you set up a company like we do, yeah. in reality, you have project with almost any segment of a company because you know you have to build all the processes so then you speak with different people and it has to be aligned with expo policy but also if you know aligned with with the local trend here so you have like internal project on on many things um you know obviously with my team in uh, in baden and in spain you know we have deals we work together so that's that's easier uh, but but i think with all the people I met in uh, in Expo for the moment, there's always something that uh, not necessarily now, but in the future we do together. So that that's the the, the, the project oriented um, I think approach which will be the most helpful because otherwise people will forget you and I will forget them. You know. Yeah. No, I think I think that 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 resonates. There has to be something in it. For everybody in a trading organization, that's a sure way to get some tailwind. If um, if there is some, um, if you can involve people in a project, 
um, uh, so there's a there's a there's a shared interest in uh, in in making something work, and a and a natural byproduct of that is that you get to know each other, and uh, and as you said, it, it it feels it feels rather it feels much less contrived, um, and and it's a bit more it's a bit more substance and purpose. Uh, yeah. in, in taking that team, for sure. Okay. Uh, thank you for that. Um, now we we have a question also from um, uh, Andrew Lucas, aka my uh, head of uh, head of production here, uh, sitting just outside of 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 uh, of, of, of you, um, and um, and he asked, "What does a day in the life of Sophie Ducolonet look like? Can you enlighten us, please?" It's absolutely amazing. <laughs> no. <laughs> Well, my, my days, well, I, I tend to, to wake up quite early because I'm lucky to have like a eight month puppy with me. So he keep me quite busy. Um, Where is he? Hmm? Where is he? Uh, he's, you know, doing his own thing, his own life now. Uh, <laughs> I like people to be independent. So no, I'm joking. He's, he's, been, he's been walking. Uh, but no, I, I, I woke up quite early. I, I like to have a bit of time prior to go to the office so you know it can be for him to walk around with me to meet to read the news because i'm very passionate about news so i you know i have all kind of newspaper uh, including from you know local newspaper from the basque country in france i'm from to various serious new york times so i you know it spend spend a lot of time on that um and then i i, I go to the office we uh, we will have, you know, hopefully a very nice office in a couple of months. So we, you know, I, I, I chat with my team and hopefully, you know, more will come. Um, I, I usually use this post-it. So every day I, you know, put whatever I have to do. Um, and then I start to read the news. I think, you know, most of us start their day looking at Bloomberg of Platz to understand where we are. Uh, read the emails because if you work in Asia, then in the morning you have a lot of emails, uh, and then you know spend time with meetings, meetings internal, external. Mm, can, I, can, I, can I just pick you up on the post ones because I, I I love to hear how other people they 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 organize their their to do lists. So the, so the post it notes. Um, mm -hmm. What um, so so you just you write them out throughout the day and then you put them on your laptop or on a wall near you how they work and then you I'm guessing then you peel them off when they when they're done what is what is that is that your sort of old school to do list Yeah yeah it's quite old school but um, yeah I, I do I mean I don't think it's something special to be honest I I, I write what I have to do and then during the day there are many things that come up and then I just bar whatever I've done and then the next day there are a few things missing so I rewrite them and then I had some stuff you know just oh, uh, I, 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 I like it just I... to be just to be a bit organized because I mean otherwise you you forget things um and, and then I, I think that the Singapore is small so so we have the luxury to to meet a lot of people uh even during the, pan the pandemic so and and it's a very yeah, uh, you know, trading and LNG is, is quite friendly community. So you, you tend to to meet people formally or informally a lot um, during the day or early evenings. Um, so yeah. So compared to compared to say you know a, a year ago, uh, just on that bit because obviously uh, Singapore is a is a super friendly village in that respect. You know, people people, you know you. Have coffees or whatever, whatever you brew, your chosen brew is. You have that all the time, and that's that's a, that's a there's a lot of that's a lot how information flows. Um, yeah. So, how with with the with the with the with the current um, with the current limitations of the pandemic, how how would you how would you compare that that activity in the village compared to say a year ago now under the pandemic, and um, when it comes to the frequency of meetings, the style of meetings, the just the 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 the, the Starbucks life of Singapore. Well, I mean, 
you you have a lot more you know small gathering you know given the rules we have uh we used to have a lot of you know event mini conference etc uh party organized uh so this is obviously over but but at the same time people tend to meet you know in small group um and you know the positive side as well uh, i think is that you know we we are all in the same situation so it also reinforced relationship even even outside singapore you know if you if you talk to someone in europe or someone in korea i mean we we're all very sad not to meet and and hence maybe we are a bit more open um but in in singapore i think even compare with london when i was before and it was not the pandemic so we could meet etc i think the, the the village culture make things easier to meet you know you don't need to travel one hour to meet someone and uh, uh, so this this has remained um, and uh, I remember some of my colleagues in in London they they never understood like why do you have meetings in coffee shop I mean you have office <laughs> it, it's part of a culture I think too yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but but and I think people miss you know the the time where we were able to travel and and meet more often for sure mm -hmm. for sure do you um, so so soon you're going to actually have a physical office uh, so for the time being uh, um, i'm staring at it i guess your 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 office um, do you um, do you I, I was reading this morning about you know these uh, like fake commutes do you do that do you get out in the morning before you return to your flat to work? Have we lost Sophie? I think we might just have lost Sophie momentarily. Oh, no, she's back. She's back. Hang on. I Sophie, you, happened. Have... Poof, I was, no, that's okay. so you may you may not have you may not yeah. heard my question. I was I was just um, uh, I was just asking you about you mentioned that in a minute, you're going to have uh, a real office. Um, and you'll be able to uh, to see your colleagues um, in, should we say, how we used to. Uh, at the moment, I guess what I'm, I'm staring at, the Axpo Singapore office, or at least a big part of it, uh, i.e. Uh, your home office. Um, uh, no, 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 we, we have a, an office. Okay, um, so you, you're going there at the moment. So this... I mean, obviously, this is not my office, but we, we have an office, a non-permanent office, uh, for just a few more months, so we we yeah. go uh, regularly there, but okay. it's not a place where you know we we're happy to to host, etc. I mean, the new office will be permanent and really align with the spirit of Axpo and also you know have IT standards, etc. So, uh, but but we 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 do go to office. Um, I mean, the, the the maybe the pandemic learn us to be a bit more flexible you know yeah. in terms of where you work I, I don't believe at all that uh, at the moment uh working from one is flexibility because it, i mean maybe not here but in many places it's compulsory and in that case you know it's not about flexibility again just compulsory uh, i think in singapore we we learn maybe a bit more to uh to to have a bit more time working from home if it's relevant but yeah. I, I think as yeah. soon as my team is there as a full team uh, we will spend most of our time together it's extremely important to build this team and i don't think you can build a team um you know with with zoom and team all the time especially no. if you are in the same city no no i i completely agree um Okay, let, let's just get back to the uh, to the question about your day. We're interested in that, Sophie. So your day is your. So, so let's talk about what happens at the at the end of the day. Is it is it uh, is that is that the moment that you um, you 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 take that puppy out for some fresh air, or when when yeah. when when does that happen? Uh, mornings and evenings. I mean, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm a very sporty person for people who know and may listen. So I, I practice quite a lot of sport. So doggy is like an addition to my current routine. Um, and I switch, you know, running to, to walking. So we, we walk. Yeah, I think we walk like, 
depending on the day, six to ten k a day. Um, is he partial uh, to running as well? No, he's, he's too small. Okay. And, and he's long, so I need to make sure his spine is strong before doing yeah. that. Um, no, but I mean, uh, sport activity for me um, is very important. So, you know, it's it's not only about the dogs. So I, I do a lot on that. Uh, during the pandemic, um, I had the, the freedom, at least my spiritual freedom was to bike, uh, like really a lot. So I went, you know, every day with my bike everywhere in Singapore up to Malaysia, etc. It was my only way to breathe, basically. Excellent. Um, so, so yeah, that's that's important for me. Excellent. Um, Andy, do we have any questions from our? Yeah. Not yet. Okay. In which case, I think Sophie. I think we, uh, uh, you know, on behalf of well, on behalf of our friends on LinkedIn, uh, but very much on behalf of Andy and I here, we thank you very much for for giving us uh, giving us your time, um, and uh, we wish you the, the very best of luck with everything. And uh, we will be uh, looking forward to. I will be looking forward to seeing you when. Uh, when I'm allowed to fly into Changi again, and um, yeah, and in the meantime, we will just, uh, I guess, just check in every now and again using this kit. So, uh, um, thank you for uh, uh, for sharing some thoughts with us, and thank you, Axpo, for uh, for lending us uh, lending us Sophie for for uh, for sharing some thoughts and. Um, Enjoy what's left of your day. Enjoy your walk, run, whatever is waiting for you this evening. And, uh, and we will catch up with you very soon. Yeah. Uh, and thanks to you. I mean, it was a very creative experience for me. Uh, so all the best. Absolutely. And, uh, and bye to everybody who listened to us. Hope you enjoyed. Perfect. Thank you. All the best.